It doesn't matter what gear you have. You've probably heard that quote before, and I believe it. I started out with my $30 microphone and $300 camera on this channel. Don't go watch those videos, they're bad. <laughs> But as you probably know by now, I'm a gear enthusiast on this channel and I review a whole bunch of gear when it comes to making videos and doing live streaming. Now I won't deny that having better gear or more expensive gear does help bridge the gap when it comes to convenience and making good content. There is a difference, but there's also a threshold when it comes to, you know, having the best gear, getting the best quality that you can. But there's also another threshold when it comes to having low performing gear or cheap gear for what you can afford. So to prove that I believe that it doesn't matter what gear you have, even a $10 microphone like this, you can add filters and EQ to make this microphone sound better. Or at least close to better. Okay, testing this microphone. One, two, three. I've, I've turned all the filters off and it still sounds like dog water. Like it sounds like I'm underwater. This $10 mic is terrible. Don't get it. Well, it turns out that this $10 microphone was not, you know, above that bottom threshold. It's just not good audio. So here's an alternative. We're gonna go with my $30 microphone and this is about four or five years old now and it's still pretty good. This is the BM700. There are some alternatives there like the newer NW800 but if you do have the budget for it there is better gear in order to get better audio for your videos and I'm not gonna lie it's nice to have good gear. It's nice to have expensive gear but it is also a blessing and I do try and remind myself that I am fortunate enough to be able to be partnered with Elgato to get all of that gear so you know if you want some of that gear it supports the channel and I'll leave links down below to everything I mentioned in this video because audio is king and you've probably heard that quote too. Now real quick if you're like Matt a member of the community you're gonna really enjoy the content in this video because not just only is this dedicated to people who have cheap microphones, but if you're looking for really good quality microphones at a pretty good price, Elgato is the way to go. And I use their gear all the time. So whether it's the Elgato Key Lights, which is just behind me there, the Elgato Wavelink software with the Wave XLR that I use, Elgato Wave 1 microphones and Wave 3 microphones, it's really good. And you get to customize your audio to make it sound better. And you do this all in the software. You don't have to download any extra plugins or VSTs or anything like like that. But assuming you don't have that budget for gear like that, we're going to do it to this $10 microphone so that we can make the audio sound better. Now one of the first steps to improving your microphone audio, it doesn't even start in the software. It starts with the microphone itself. Now usually, you know, microphones come with this little stand and it just sits on your desk and these, the shock mount is all over the place. So you want to bring the microphone closer to your mouth. So instead of it being on the desk, you bring it up closer and you can only do that with a microphone arm. I use Algar those ones because they're the best and most versatile you can see it in the background there that's what I use but if you don't have a budget for that there's other cheap options this is a $15 inner gear microphone boom arm I've had this for about five four or five years now it's lasted that long I still use it to this day for my Elgato face cam to get that side angle when I'm streaming but you know I don't use it for moving around and stuff and such it's just got these terrible springs but hey if that's what your budget allows this will do just fine I'll leave a link down below if that's what you want to get so this is a mic distance comparison right now it's on the stand on my table here and it's okay it sounds okay it's not too bad uh the microphone is about this distance away from my mouth which is not ideal we obviously don't want that so if i move the microphone closer to my mouth you can s hear that the microphone actually sounds pretty good for being a 34 dollar mic you know but let's take a look and see how to do all of this in obs studio now the first step in order to make a microphone sound better is disabling windows audio processing to do this go to your speaker icon on your taskbar and right click it go to the sounds, go to recording and then select your mic and then click properties. Click levels and adjust them accordingly. Between 80 to 100% will work. Then go to the advanced tab and turn off this checkbox because it's adding audio treatment to your microphone which you don't want. It's not very good. Now one thing to be able to monitor your microphone while recording or testing all of your audio filters and EQs is you go to the settings button next to the audio tab in OBS and click advanced audio properties and go to audio monitoring and select the monitor and output option. Now when you're adding your microphone to OBS for the first time, oh and by the way I do have a full video on how to set up OBS studio from start to finish, link is in the top right in the cards. This is part of the biggest series called the biggest 
fill in the blank tutorial online. So I've created a series where on that topic, everything you need to know is in that one video. These are long videos, but everything you need to know is right in there. I have a full series, more coming out in the future. I do it every month. So subscribe and stick around if that's something that you're interested in, particularly with the topic of streaming. But here's how you add your microphone into OBS Studio. First, go to settings and then go to the audio tab and under the mic auxiliary audio, go ahead and click the drop down menu and then you can select what microphone you have. I'm gonna click apply, give it a second, click OK, and now my microphone is showing up in OBS. One important thing to note here is to make sure you know what pickup pattern your microphone has. So for example, a microphone here could be picking up from all around. So you obviously don't want a microphone that does that. Make sure you know what pickup pattern you have. Mine's pretty directional. So it picks up from the front of the microphone and rejects most of what happens behind the mic. This is what most vocal microphones do anyways, but just be sure you know what it is before you get it or understand your microphone if you already have that one. Now, speaking of OBS Studio, Visuals by Impulse gives you really cool overlays, alerts, and assets, including emotes for your live streams. So you can make your live streams look even better. Visuals by Impulse is not sponsoring this video. I like them that much. I'm just talking about them. And if you use the link down below, you get 5% off your order automatically applied to your checkout. So it's really nice. They also have some really awesome free ones. I use a bunch of their free assets from Visuals by Impulse. And if you use the link down below, it supports the channel, allows me to continue creating free content for you so that you can continue to increase the production value of your live streams and videos. Let's continue with the video. Okay, so let's add some filters and EQ to your microphone so that it sounds better. First thing we're gonna do is on your audio channel here in your audio mixer, go to the settings button and go to the filters option here. Let's click the plus button and we're gonna add a compressor. And a compressor does pretty much what you would expect. It compresses your audio so that your lows are brought up so that your microphone isn't so quiet when you talk quietly and your highs aren't peaking or just getting too loud. And so that brings it down a bit. So it kind of squishes your audio to keep it the same audio level so that you know your viewers aren't constantly adjusting their volume buttons. Now we'll set the threshold to zero, but we'll come back to that in just a second. Let's go ahead and set the attack between two to four. It's not exactly a science. Uh, it just you know depends on what microphone you have as well. So take this with a grain of salt. Let's set the release to between 100 and 200 milliseconds. I'm gonna set it at about of a sweet spot. Um, let's say 150, 145. If you're watching this video by this point, type in the comments 145 and I'll give you a cookie because, you know, thank you so much for watching the video this far. Now, output gain is where things get interesting. This is going to be based on what microphone you have. So it's going to be different for you. But essentially what you're trying to do is increase the audio output so that your microphone comes up closer to being towards the end of the yellow and hitting the red. Currently, that's what it's doing now. But let me just increase it to show you what that means. If I increase it too far, now it's peaking as you can see. That doesn't, obviously you don't want to do that. Now remember that this is the loudest that you are going to make a sound on stream. This isn't the loudest sound you can possibly make. This is gonna be the, you know, if for example, if you're clapping, you can see it peaked there, or maybe if you're yelling really loud or slamming a desk. So we're gonna do that right now. Hey, so obviously that peaked, we're gonna reduce that. Hey, still peaking. Hey, hey, I'm gonna increase it a little bit because it's too low. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, I'd say that's pretty good. Hey. That's about the loudest sound I can make. And it's hitting about negative one, negative two dB. As long as it's not hitting zero, that's when it's gonna peak. So right now that sounds pretty good. Now the threshold is where we kind of increase the low parts of the microphone so that when you're talking quietly, your audience can still hear you without adjusting that volume button. Okay, so I'm gonna talk kind of quietly and I'm gonna reduce it so that you can see how much the threshold is adjusting. If I reduce the threshold, it's pretty low. It's all the way down to, what's this, negative 40. So if I I increase the threshold it's going to increase my quiet volume all the way up so that my microphone volume is pretty close to being consistent. It's okay if it hits the middle of the yellow when I'm quiet but then when I'm loud it's kind of around the same place. So that's obviously really good. Now the next thing we want to add is an expander and what this does is it's going to reduce the keyboard or the mice clicks or other noises that you make because when you add the compressor, it's gonna increase all of your quiet sounds, including your keyboard and mouse. Obviously, we don't wanna do that, so let's fix that. So let's go ahead and click the plus button and we're gonna add the expander and then we're gonna set the ratio to four like we did before. 
I'm a poet and I don't even know it. <laughs> we're gonna set the attack between two and four. I'm gonna set it to three because I'm a rebel. And then we're gonna set the release between 100 and 200 milliseconds. Again, I'm gonna do, let's see if I can get it again, 146. Type 146 in the comments if you made it this far in the video. Okay, now I'm gonna monitor my audio because I need to make sure that when I'm talking or when I'm quiet, I'm doing exactly what I wanna do. So what happens with the threshold on this is at negative 40 dB, which is what it's set right now, it's gonna close my microphone or it's essentially a noise gate if you know what that is. Now obviously everything above negative 40 dB is going to be going through the microphone, it's gonna be heard, including my mouse click sounds or my keyboard. So you can see if I'm quiet and not talking, you can see the room tone is at negative 20 dB right here, which obviously was set to negative 40. Let's set it to negative 19. I'm gonna show you the example here. You can see that no audio shows up in the audio meter because it's being cut off as it is underneath my threshold. But when I click, you'll see that it's still being picked up because it's still pretty loud. Now, most of my audio is gonna be picked up when I'm at between negative 15 and let's say negative two dB here. So let's go ahead and set that when my microphone senses my voice, it usually is gonna be between negative 15 and negative two. So I'm gonna set it to, let's say negative 16. So now it's gonna only pick up part of my audio and it sounds pretty rough right now. So I'm gonna change the ratio to two. And if you find that the, when it opens and closes, the noise gate essentially is what it is, it's gonna open and close it pretty harsh. And now I'm just gonna smooth it out by putting it at the ratio of two. So in case it sounds rough and it, it's cutting out a little bit of your stuff, putting the ratio to two is gonna help. Now also reducing the threshold because let's say your quiet sounds, if I talk quietly, it's still picking it up right now because I have the, com the compressor pulling up my audio. So I'm gonna actually leave it at, let's say negative 17 so that all my audio when I'm not talking doesn't show up like my mouse and my keyboard. Now, having your ratio between two and four, just adjust it as you go. So while you're talking, you can increase and decrease that and get it to a sweet spot. Uh, I think 2.4 is working out pretty good right now. If I increase my monitoring here so I can hear what's going on. This is sounding pretty good. Okay, so now we're gonna add a VST and this particular one is called TDR Nova. So TDR Nova is a VDST plugin which is Visual Studio Technology. It's just a fancy way of saying instead of having the physical sliders to adjust all your EQ and filters, you've got it in software. Now what we're gonna do with this is with the microphone, particularly this one, I wanna boost the lows so that it sounds more deep and sounds like radio voice. I'm gonna reduce the highs actually a little bit because on this particular microphone, Phone, it sounds pretty harsh. But if the high sounds like the s type of sounds, if those sound pretty muddy and kind of muted, you might want to increase those to help make your voice sound clearer. But with my particular microphone, I'm going to reduce them a little bit. I'm going to show you what this all means. I'm also going to reduce my mid tones because that's the muddy part of the sound or my voice. And this is with most voices too. And I'll show you how to do all of this. So once you've installed your VST, I do have a whole video on how to install VSTs. Link is in the top right in the cards if you wanna know how to do that for OBS Studio. But here's how we're gonna add that VST. First, we're gonna click the plus button. We're gonna add VST2 plugin. Let's just click OK. And then we're gonna go ahead and select TDR Nova, which is the one we just installed. And we're gonna open the plugin interface. Okay, so this might be a little bit intimidating for those of you who don't understand how this particular VST works or how to treat any audio, but this is very straightforward. So here's how it works. We've got four bands here, one, two, three, and four. And this is how we're gonna control everything. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I click out so that you can see your audio levels here and you can see what's going on. If I click off, it's not gonna be active and I'm not gonna be able to monitor it in my headphones. So with it set to out, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this band all the way to the bottom and I'm actually gonna increase the bass. Now, this is a very extreme example of me increasing the bass here and you wanna make sure that with your particular microphone, you do it accordingly. You might wanna reduce it significantly and if you wanna target that particular part of the bass, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the Q value and we're gonna increase it so that it doesn't change the base of your entire low part of your audio, it can get pretty specific. So you can see it's boosting just part of my base. I can boost the very, very 
deep parts of my voice if I want to. Or let's go a little bit closer to the midtones and you can increase that a little bit too, which sounds even better. So we're gonna stick around about here. And then with the midtones here, we're actually gonna drag this down because we don't want our midtones to show up as much in our audio because it's the muddy sound of our microphone or our voice, I should say. Now we can again increase the Q value here to sharpen that curve so that it's more specific to the midtones and it's not blanketing it from between our heavies or our deep parts of our sound to the, the high parts and it's not just taking our entire midtones, it's actually just squeezing it down to the select part of our midtones. Now with our last band here, I'm gonna completely ignore the third one because it's fine where it is. With here, I'm gonna increase the side here and I'm gonna drag it down a little bit because my S and SH type of sounds are pretty harsh with this particular microphone. So I'm gonna reduce it. It adds essentially like a de -er, if you know what a de -er does. It, does what the sound or, or what the name suggests, a D S's your S's. So your S and SH type of sounds are softer and it's a little lighter on your audience's ears. But if your S and SH type of sounds are sort of muted and dull, you can increase this so that you can make your audio sound more crisp and clear. Okay, so I'm gonna set mine down there and that should sound pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and close that because we're good with the VST2 plugin, the TDR Nova. If you do want sort of a blanketed statement for the TDR Nova and the settings for it, I'll leave that info down in the description so you can see what all the best and one, two, three, and four would look like, have their technical numbers in case you wanna just copy and paste it and then kind of work from there. That might be a good option to start with. Now we're gonna add a bit of noise suppression because while you're talking, you're still gonna hear some of the background room tone, like maybe your AC or my computer behind me in my case. So what we're gonna do is click the plus button. I'm gonna add noise suppression, which is right over here. Let's click okay. And we can change this depending on what GPU you have. Now RNN noise is gonna require a bit more of a powerful CPU but it is going to have better quality. So let's go ahead and add that. And I can already hear a little bit of the difference in my monitoring because I'm listening to what my microphone sounds like and it sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and do the top one, which requ requires low CPU and uh, you can increase the noise suppression. Now, the, the more you do it, the more muddy and underwater sound it, it's going to sound like, just like the terrible $10 microphone that I got, you're going to make it sound like a $10 microphone. So just decrease the amount of suppression level and uh, you know kind of go as you're monitoring and you know you can see what it sounds like depending on what your microphone is okay now the last thing you want to do and this is very straightforward is adding a limiter and it does what the name suggests so I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus and do limiter click OK now this is gonna be the threshold where the loudest sound on my microphone hits and it will not go louder than that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it to negative 1.7 because I just don't want it to hit zero where it peaks now, if my microphone for whatever reason gets extremely loud and I clap really loud or something, my microphone's not gonna go above negative 1.7 dB. So it's not gonna peak, which is ideal because we don't want that to happen. It's not gonna sound good for our audience. I'm gonna leave the release at 60 milliseconds because uh, that's just a good, you know, a good mid range right there. Okay, and this is what the microphone sounds like before all the filters are applied. The microphone is about this distance from my mouth, which is about average, it's pretty good. Audio levels are are looking okay. Uh, right now they're hitting about negative 15 dB, which is about the low end of what I would want my microphone to sound like. So let's add some filter and EQ to it. And this is what the microphone sounds like with all the filters on. It sounds really good. Right now my microphone is hitting about negative 10 dB, which is about what I want. I could also increase it a little bit, but this is what it sounds like with all the filters on and it should sound pretty good. So now that you've added all of your filters and EQ to your microphone in OBS Studio, your microphone is gonna sound great and your audience is gonna love it you're watching this far in the video so either you found it entertaining or educational and helpful so leave a like that'd be appreciated it helps the youtube algorithm because this is my full-time job and it helps pay the bills thanks and it would seem that you dream for better alerts for your live streams i use visuals by impulse and they're good there's a bunch of options with the link down below. You get a coupon of 5% off automatically applied at checkout if you decide to get some of their premium assets. But they've got some really nice free options as well. And I use their free options too. Along with, you know, their hype meter and alerts that I actually paid for for my stream to make it look better. And I find that people donate bits and subscribe and, you know, donate money more often now before I had these alerts than 
you know, when I had these alerts. Now, Visuals by Impulse doesn't pay me in any way, except if you use the link down below and you get that 5% discount. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, subscribe and stick around for the future. I create a bunch of educational content like these two here, how to set up OBS Studio from start to finish and how to use Algato Wavelink software and add VSTs and EQ to their microphones. You should go check it out. It's actually really good.